It is a big and defining day for Nigeria's electoral process. The National Assembly is set to pass the Electoral Act Amendment Bill today. While there are many areas that stakeholders consider as controversial, like the adop adoption of the electoral transmission of results from polling units and an increasing spending limits for candidates that want to contest for political positions, an interesting amendment is the approval of a 20-year jail term or a fine of 40 million naira for ballot box snatchers. Now, the Senate also approved 10-year imprisonment for any person who sells voters' card or in possession of any other's voters' card bearing the name of another person, amongst others. Joining me now is uh, Public Affairs Analyst and Election Observer Nelson Ekujimi. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Right. And the Executive Director of Peering Advocacy and Advancement Center, Ezen Wangwagu, also joins me via Zoom. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Ezenwa, can you hear me? All right. We'll come back to you. But let, let's begin the conversation in the studio uh, with uh, Nelson. I, I wonder what came to mind, especially saying that uh, uh, certain adjustments have been made and a bill has been intended you know, to establish the Electoral Offenses Commission, which, if passed into law, will see an unbundling of INEC such that it can the body can be able to prosecute electoral offenders. Let's begin from there because this has generated divergent reactions. Yes, uh, thank you very much. I think the coming on board of the Electoral Offenses Commission, it's a, it's a long overdue mm -hmm. development because over the years we have seen people violate the electoral laws and um, we have uh, very little you know, uh, disciplinary measures meted out to them. And uh, the crisis has been out there in the public domain among the stakeholders that there's a need for an electoral commission that will be solely focused mm. on, you know, enforcing the laws with regards to elections. And, you know, the coming on board of this electoral commission, if you ask me, I think it's long overdue. It's a welcome development. But how it conducts its operations is another thing that we, you know, we need to grapple with. That is a concern the, for you. I wonder why. Yes, the concern for me is that when we talk about electoral offenses, mm. it has different faces. Right. Yeah, you know, there was a time they would tell you on election day, some persons would come to the polling station's vicinity and induce voters. Right. When the, cry, when the outcry became so loud, we started hearing reports that it, that it is now done overnight, mm. previous day, you know? It's like they are preparing against the real day that, okay, because we are going to vote tomorrow. Today is a Friday. Please, this is how I want you to cast your ballot. So that is the faces we are going through. And that is why the amendments to the Electoral Act, in as much as one is not against it, because there's the, you know, imperative need for us to restore sanity to our electoral system. Absolutely. Our electoral system should not be... Um, in the Ankara market, if you permit the use of that word, should not just be like a market. It should be something that, that should be refined, should be, you know, should be civil, should be transparent and mm. accountable. Mm. So if we have laws that are meant to do this, it is not only the, 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 the outcome of the laws that we should be concerned with. We should also be concerned with the process for enforcing the laws. Because as an election observer, I've gone through this country and I've seen where elections are conducted and in some places in a bid to enforce the law mm. at that point in time it could result to kiosk that will you know that will that will result in that election not holding successfully right. because we've seen communal conspiracy where elders in the community will sit down some meters away from the polling stations and they'll monitoring. be monitoring monitoring and the, the the polling the polling station environment will be like a market where everybody is just need to get one naira or two naira, even including security agencies, mm. is, is is that bad? So if we are talking about you know the laws now that is being you know uh, amended you know to uh, to be in tune with modern realities, there's also the need for us to up the ante with regards to the process. That okay, we want to ensure that um, somebody does not snatch a ballot box. Mm -hmm. 
the person that snatches a ballot box will not come there unharmed. We have seen cases where when they want to come and snatch ballot box, the first thing they do is that they fire shots into the air. Right. And if they are resisted, they, they, they will shoot at that person. How do we ensure that the, 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 this um, election, the, the, the election uh, premises, the voting area, how do we ensure that it is you know, closely monitored, maybe through CCTV, like we have with uh, Jam now, you know, in those days when we were writing Jam, mm -hmm. there was nothing like that monitoring by CCTV no, like, like they do it. now. Yes, and you know, and with the coming on board of the CCTV for Jam now, you have seen that it has reduced the level of Not exam practices, practices mm. a lot. The impersonation and what have you can no longer take place because of technological developments. So, when we are talking about ballot box snatching, being in possession of voters, are we saying that the National Assembly is going to empower? This electoral commission is it going to have its own security, its own personnel, mm. differently from the Nigerian police? Are they going to be empowered in such a way that they have a monitor that they will use, you know, in ensuring that they have a close technology? Yes, so to speak. Yeah. So those are the areas that you know that have a concern to me. Should they have a, a different uh, security personnel that is separate from the police, from your own view? Because some other persons have raised concerns like this, similar to what you have said. Yes, I would have loved that the police should be brought in and, you know, there should be a creation of a department, just like we have the EFCC. Right. As you and I sit down here, we know very clearly that the EFCC is peopled by personnel from the Nigerian police force. Yes. So if we are talking about security, under the laws of Nigeria, it is the Nigerian police. So if we are bringing persons from the Nigerian police and we are going to recruit more, to train them along this line, you know, to, uh, to enforce the law as, with regards to election issues, then it means that, you know, this body has to be totally independent, such that those encumbrances that you find, mm. you know, with the judicial system will also be removed in a way. Mm. People have advocated the setting up of a special court. Yes. You know, that it so will fast track. Cases, yes. Cases, yes. Mm. That is also important. Mm. So, I want to look at how this Electoral Offenses Commission uh, body, how it's going to conduct its operations, and you know, because there's no finest way to a journey. As mm -hmm. you go along the journey, there will be pitfalls. Absolutely. And you know, you learn you from it, and you, you improve on it. Uh, but, but, but then again, there, there's the aspect that has also generated controversy, which a lot of people are looking forward to today, that perhaps uh, they will put an end to the controversy surrounding it, which is the transmission, electoral transmission of results, which for some persons are saying, if you are saying that uh, there is going to be a 20-year jail term for anyone who you know, snatched the ballot box. Why are you saying that uh, taking out the uh, electoral transmission of results, which can, you know, ensure that ballot box are not snatched? All of those. So a lot of persons are looking forward. Yes, the electronic or uh, ele electoral transfer of... Uh, electronic transmission of transmission results. Transmission of results. It's not a bad idea. But we must also recognize that the basic infrastructure needed to carry out that exercise could be lacking in some environment within, the, within Nigeria. We also recognize that the, the technological uh, way we do, mm. we are not there as we were supposed to be technologically. Because you get to some environment, you can't access the internet. Mm. So what happens? How do you transfer? If we can identify these environments, shouldn't we make special arrangement for such in those environments and to say a, make a blanket statement? Although they are saying this is subject to INEC now, uh, although those areas, if they have been identified, why can't we just limit it to those areas, make peculiar arrangement for areas? No, I, I don't think you can isolate such areas because at times you can have system breakdown. Mm. So can you isolate, will you be able to preempt that tomorrow there will be a system collapse? Mm. So, but what we are saying in essence is that if you have a system in which all the stakeholders have access to the portal, in which if there's any attempt to you, or if, if I recognize that, look, this journey I'm embarking on, there are so many people also involved in this right. journey, and we are all, on this, on the, we are all in the same bus. If I attempt to do anything, you know, 
uh, to, tamper. A, to tamper with it, that yeah. you know, it could land me in trouble. I would think twice. Let me give you an example. In 2011, the civil society and INEC had a portal in which, at every election stage, the activities were transmitted to a portal in which both parties were involved. Uh, immediately, the accreditation of voters ends. You send the number of uh, accredited voters to a particular portal. Immediately, the voting ends. Mm. The total number of vote cast, you send it there, party A, party B. So you can see that when you have such a system, because I was an election observer in that in the election of that year, and I remember particularly a, a, an election in which I observed in, in one of the states. And when I got there, the, one of the party agents approached me and said that ah, they want us as observers to cooperate that in this particular uh, environment, polling station, that they have three polling, uh, three polling uh, Units. voting points. Okay. That for those three voting points that they return not less than 2,000 votes. But lo and behold, I told them that, oh, because I was very smart. Mm. You know, it's only somebody who is alive that can, you know, report incidents. The environment was hostile. I just told them that, oh, I didn't believe you approached me earlier. We have done the accreditation and have transmitted the, the, the number of accredited voters. Mm. If we tamper with it now, the votes here of this three polling unit will become null and void. Mm. At the end of the day, in the polling station that the, uh, the party, chief party agent said, this place belongs to my party. In polling, in polling point one, they ha we had 77 votes, total votes. In polling two, we had 50, maybe 58. And in the last one, we had maybe about 70. So in all, the three polling stations didn't have up to 200. Mm -hmm. And this was a polling uh, station that somebody came and said, oh, please, you have to cooperate with us. So this is how we deal with it. And they were, they were ready to induce you with whatever is needed to make, you, mm. to make you comply. But that system that was in place was also a check on me because at a certain point in time, we are not the only one there. As you are sending your own year in Lagos, the man in uh, Sokoto, the man in Inewi, immediately, be, and you know, for uh, observers, you are not the only observer from your own organization. There are other observers also. Mm -hmm. So everybody is doing the, the same thing at the same time. So if I send mine at 11.15, at the time the election, uh, of the, uh, the election accreditation ended at this particular point, if you send yours at 12.05, that means something, something is, wrong. is wrong. Suspicion will be raised about that. Point. And I'm sure INEC also had their own interface with their, with their personnel, which we are not conversant with because, you know, yeah. you run your things independently. Right. So what I'm saying is that as good as the electronic uh, transfer would be, there are still some um, shortfalls or pitfalls that we cannot, you know, we cannot envisage. Mm. But as time goes on, I think there is need for us to ensure that we have a system in which whatever is being done is not done by only by INEC alone, but by all the other stakeholders. stakeholders. Because you know, for a, for an election now, you have the electoral empire, mm. you have the security agencies, you have the political party agents, you have the the observers. And you have the voters mm. as well as the media who are all interested who are all interested who all monitors the mm. process so whatever you are doing should not be you know it should not be isolated to INEC alone because there are some factors that can you know inhibit the performance of that activity so invariably as it stands now we are not yet matured for the no we are matured but we just don't have the facilities right you know to sustain it now, let's look at um, uh, this um, measures put in place. Uh, the, the, the Senate okayed a 20-year jail term for ballot box snatching, amongst others. And I'm wondering if you see that as a deterrent moving forward. We have seen even the president talked of uh, during uh, the elections, the last election, where he talked about how whoever is caught snatching ballots should be dealt with. And we see, saw what happened in places like Ogi State and some other states where election uh, took place. But then when you look at this critically, would it serve as a deterrent? I doubt if it will. Mm. What will serve as a deterrent is if you have a process that will ensure that whoever commits that crime will not go unpunished. 
and that is for him to be to be captured and to be caught. Because you, you mentioned Kogi, I was in Kogi. Mm. When people snatch ballot, the person snatching ballot box, they could be five or six. When they will come, they will fire shots into the air. Or if you try to resist, they will fire at you. And in that process, everybody will scamper for safety. Right. But if you have a system in which by the time you approach this, they are captured. They are captured. Then you will think twice that even if I go and snatch this battle box, if I run away, I will be traced and brought to book. But since you know nobody is there, it's, it's your word against mine. If I can't capture you snatching the battle box, I cannot allege. Because who alleges mm. must prove. Right. If I say you have snatched the ballot box, then I must be able to provide the evidence. The snatching of ballot box is not just by word of mouth. So it is important for us to have a system in place that the voting environment is monitored maybe remotely mm. by technology, such that anybody approaching the voting environment will know that, look, I'm under the radar. Mm. Whether you are going there to vote, whether they are going there to do otherwise, you know that whatever you do there, there's consequences for it. Now, let's look at um, what this will do for our democracy. Because so far, according to reports, uh, INEC has been unable to prosecute 1% of the 870,000 and over 900,000 alleged electoral offenders in the 2011 and 2015 elections. That's a lot. A whole lot. Yes. Now, if this bill to establish this electoral commission is passed into law and it comes on board how would this help our democracy moving forward because we know that elections are a critical part of any democracy and we also know that we need to check the process like you have earlier pointed out yes i think uh, the coming on board of this electoral offenses commission will go a long way you know, in restoring sanity to our electoral system, in the sense that this will be a body that will have a structure, yeah. and that structure will have all the, uh, the, 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 the force of law. And in having that, it means the INEC as a body will be solely focused on its primary responsibility. Because when you talk about prosecution, it involves a lot of technicalities. Absolutely. So are you saying somebody who has been trained in the art of um, how to conduct election, are you saying he or she must have that skill to prosecute, having that knowledge that what constitutes an offense? So the Electoral Offenses Commission, we have all that details, and they have the expertise to deal with that. They have the personnel. So when we have all this in, in place in the Electoral Offenses Commission, that means that commission is solely responsible for the arrest and prosecution of, maybe for, maybe for the prosecution, maybe the arrest will be done by INEC or by the Nigerian police. But that body, or even the citizens, because even uh, citizens can arrest electoral offenses, mm -hmm. offenders, if you find them. Yeah, if you have the capacity to do that. Right. But in most cases, it is very, very difficult. dangerous and difficult. Hmm. Because you get to a place, uh, an election is going on, somebody will come and approach you, Oga, see, that they give them money for that place. You look there. By the time you are looking at, you just see a crowd gathered. Because your duty as an observer is not to monitor crowd gathered outside the polling station. Your duty is to observe the election. The election. You, are not you are not observing people. By the time you are looking at that place and you want to call a police officer, officer, please see those people there. Another person from the other side will now come. Oh, God, don't mind them. Oh. See their own for that side. You now see that you are faced with two or three groups some distances away from the polling stations. So you can recognize that if you go for this, the other people will gather, will mobilize themselves and say, no, if you are arresting this, then you must arrest. Mm. So you can, you can recognize that there's the possibility of the election being truncated in that environment. Right. So it's a very difficult exercise. We must recognize that. But be that as it may, I think it is also important for us to up the ante with regards to the stakeholders buying mm. so that everybody becomes uh, a see something and say something mm. possible. That, that is why some people say that these offenses should be made public. Public, yes. Create awareness, awareness for everybody yes, to so that know everybody so that people can check. Sure, absolutely. And, and you know, aid the agencies involved mm, yes. along the line. We we'll have less efforts mm. and less time involved in prosecuting. It's just like the, 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 the buying that Nigerian 
motorists have with regards to the use of seatbelts. You can imagine if we are disobeying that law, how many road safety personnel or last mile or police do we have on ground to apprehend everybody? Mm. But yesterday, I was driving in my car just within a short distance, and I tried my seatbelt. I picked the man. The man said, ah, This thing has become, you, you people have become used to it. I said, It is for our own safety. I don't Absolutely. need anybody to tell me. Mm. Thank you so much, uh, Public Affairs Analyst and Election Observer Nelson Ekujimi. Thank you so much. Uh, we were supposed to have the Executive Director of Peering Advocacy and Advancement Center, Eze Wanwagu, but uh, for network challenges, he couldn't join us uh, on this conversation. But thank you so much for joining us.